morning everybody. Today the assembly is conducted by grade 8B students. First of all, I would like to invite Buddhini to do the opening prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. Lord, help our hands do all things that are loving and kind and true. Jesus, guard us throughout this day in all that we do and say. We commit to you our school, our teachers, friends and all staff members. Lord, please be with us when we study. Help us concentrate and learn. Lord, please help us to be strong and happy and to care for our families, teachers and friends. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Buddhini. Now let's stand straight for the National Anthem. said the need to present her speech. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can't spend it. Once you have lost it, you can never get it back. Words were spoken by how many. Good morning, Sir David, teachers and dear friends. Today, I'm present here to speak a few words about the importance of time. Time is the most precious, most meaningful resource we ever got in our life. It plays a significant role in our daily tasks. It waits for none of us. A riddle often used expresses, 
Time runs and runs but can't flee, often watched but never seen, when long it brings boredom and when short it brings fear. Time represents in the way you use it. Now, I'm going to give you some simple reasons for why time is fundamental in life. 1. Every single thing in the universe is affected by time. Nothing is eternal. Even if the process is slow or fast, everyone is born to time and finally has a time to leave the world. 2. Wasted time can be brought back. People spend time on working to collect money, when actually they can do something they really want, something that makes them feel special. Psychological research also proves the fact that you'd be happier if you see time as more valuable than money. 3. No one rules how much time we might get through our life in our future. People are born and has to die someday as a natural rule and we can't change it. 4. We don't own or can change the past, but the present is in our hands now. Oh yes, the past can hurt. You can either run away from it or learn from it. A famous misquote from Lion King. The way you receive the satisfaction from time depends on your own perception. 5. In the play Macbeth, William Shakespeare wrote, Let every man be the master of his own time. Managing the span you have got poorly or well affects you and can only be handled by your own self. 6. Have you heard of the quote? Time is a teacher and healer itself. Time gives you a lot of lessons in your life. In another situation where you are wounded physically or mentally, the best way to heal it will often be giving it some time to recover. It might be true that the critical situation in the world is harmfully impacted. But in another way, COVID-19 has given us all an opportunity to try out new things, work on what we already have. The only thing that we must be aware is on how we spend this time with value to our lives. Here are some few ways how you can spend your time usefully. 1. Try something new. Trying something new always makes a difference in your life. Learning more is never in vain. 2. Keep a journal or diary. Keep a book for your secrets and emotions. Writing them somewhere helps you a lot. Research proves that people with distress often keep a diary in order to remove their stress out. 3. Read a book. Reading a book gives you an experience of 100 years. 3. Having a hobby. Having a hobby keeps yourself distracted from things that might distress you out. 4. Revise what you have learned. Revising refreshes your mind. 5. Focus and work on your targets. You can either work on new targets or make plans to reach the goal that you already have decided. Finally, I would like to give an end to the few words spoken by an abstract. Time is not the main thing, it's the only thing by Miles Davis. Thank you. You have the most powerful weapon with you. Now fight with it against your own destiny. Thank you, Sadhini. Now I invite Mith Sandhi to deliver her speech. Dear respected principal and teachers, today I would like to speak few words about a good citizen. The word citizen has various meanings. In this sense, a person may be an Indian citizen or even an American citizen. Wherever this word is used, it has one main meaning. A good citizen is one who follows the rules and regulations of constitutes of the nation. Whenever we hear the word good citizen, almost all the people feel relief in their hearts. A good citizen always gets respect from the other people too. Moreover, a citizen is a person who has certain duties and responsibilities along with rights and regulations. While he has all the right to participate in political, legal, judicial, social, economic, and religious affairs of the country, he has the responsibility to have regard and respect for the culture and heritage of the country, maintain social harmony and love, and not to do such anything which may hurt the public sentiment. 
he should be loyal and dutiful to the society. He needs to take care of the weak and poor. In considering about good citizens, you may wonder how to become a good citizen. It's simple. It should be just like the person who is actively active in the needs of the community or the society. Social works include security programs, annual programs, plantation, health, education programs, etc. that are good for the citizens. The best quality of a good citizen is the honesty and trustworthiness that one of the good citizens must have in their social limits. This is the best character to identify the nature of a good citizen. A good citizen includes the facts that the person of every individual should access. A good citizen knows the importance of the rules and laws, obeying and following the nation's responsibilities, one of the major roles or vital roles for a good citizen. It is our duty and responsibility to follow every rule and regulation applied in the country for the benefit of the local people. Each and every civil right should be respected and should be visualized by the good citizen. His best quality of a good citizen is to respect every people's emotions and feelings towards their respective culture and traditions. A country is not a country by the number of lands or the border of the country. It is called a country because the people living in that country have a common goal of development and progress of the country, which can only be understood by a good citizen. A good citizen automatically encourages and promotes other people. It helps to improve the relationships between family members and friends. So one must be a good citizen for a happy and peaceful living. Even though we are students, we are also considered as citizens in Sri Lanka. So learning well, utilizing all facilities is the way for us to be a good citizen. Thank you for listening to my speech. Thank you, Ms. Sandi. Now let's stand straight for the school anthem followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Before ending the assembly, I would like to end the assembly with a quote. If you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. And thank you for your participation. And the next meeting will be conducted by grade 9 national students. Thank you.